All right, guys, EU just changed smartphones forever. Let's check it out. Hi. Did they really? Did they really? I heard Apple is doing something similar based on the thumbnail, which is a removable battery, guys. Welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. In Cold Fusion's early days, back in the early to mid 2010s, a lot of Android phones would make their way onto the channel. Hey, bro. They've been around for a while then, right, guys? One very common feature among these phones was user-replaceable batteries. At the time, carrying a spare battery in your pocket wasn't that unusual of an occurrence. But have you ever wondered what happened to that? Nowadays, thanks to industry-wide design changes... Dude, that's, a, that's, a, that's our dream phone right there, the Pixel 7, guys. Glass, glue, and metals have become the industry standard for materials. Because of oh, this, man. easily mm. replaceable batteries are no longer possible. This is just badly, bro. Uh, uh, you can't even open up the back of my phone, guys. It's like a 2022 uh, low to mid range phone, basically a low range uh, price range phone. In the way things have been for the better part of a decade, but well, it comes with the stylus. Are <laughs> about to change in a sweeping new law by the European Parliament. Replaceable battery products will be forced back into fashion. The law will have an effect on phones. Is that for real? Phones, tablets, and laptops not just in Europe, but worldwide. In this episode, we'll take a quick look. Yo, that's actually good because they should, uh, you know, you place a battery, bam. You can keep the phone like new for so long because the battery won't lose all the cycles if you lose it, use it a lot. And, and uh, you know, it's just, th it's a good thing overall, I believe. In June of 2023, the European Parliament voted 587 to 9 in a bid to force all consumer devices. Hey, bro, that was an overwhelming majority voted yes. Devices to have easily replaceable batteries. Easily replaceable means that the battery changing process should require no special tools. This means manufacturers can no longer use adhesives. The direct quote from the EU is that battery replacement should require quote. No tool or set of tools that is supplied with the product or spare part or basic tools. The process for replacement shall be able to be carried out by a layman. That's good, that's good. I think it should be as well. Almost all smartphones today are designed like a glass sandwich. This was the design that was settled upon as the smartphone market matured. Did you just say glass sandwich? What the heck? The glass sandwich method of construction is sleek and thin, but relies on an extensive use of adhesives. This law would mean that the very fundamentals of how companies design phones will Actually need to do enjoy the glass sandwich. I, I, my, my phone kind of looks like a glass sandwich, but mine's more plastic, you guys. Change. I'm, I'm not at the ma- like, it, it might be- my device might be made in 2022, but it's not- it doesn't have that, that modern glass, guys. Companies figure out a new way to build the same phones without adhesives. Manufacturers, from Apple to Google to Samsung, will be affected. Foldable phones will face a huge challenge when trying to comply with these laws, so we'll have to wait and see on that front. So how does the law in the EU possibly affect the rest of the world? Well, it's yeah, like- bro, playing Genshin Impact? That phone I think phones should be like this. I'm gonna- It looks way cooler. Manufacturers aren't going to design a specific phone for the EU. Hopefully in the future we can get phones like that, but you know, it's like double the phone. Reason being, it's expensive, so it's going to eat into their profits. Apple, for example, is unlikely to design a European iPhone with a replaceable battery and another iPhone with a sealed battery for other regions. This EU law will have a rippling consequence across the world. Probably in a good way, though, you know. This further, the law also affects tablets, laptops, EVs, nah, are you serious? E-bikes, and basically anything with a rechargeable battery. Uh, so laptops, my laptop used to have a easily removable battery. Now you gotta unscrew it and stuff and probably like disconnect some stuff. In July of 2023, the law was approved by the European Council and will come into effect in 2020. Yeah, literally last month, guys. This gives over three years for manufacturers to get their act together. Oh, that's quite a while, bro. It's nothing. Three years, guys? Ooh. This will be an especially big change for Apple, who have never featured removable batteries since the very first iPhone. Samsung stopped featuring removable batteries on their flagships back in 2014. And way back in 2014, man. 
So many people think that waterproofing and dustproofing will be much harder to achieve, but right to repair advocate Lewis Rossman argues some good points. So I'm old enough to remember when this was not a repair, but maintenance. And I'm also old enough to remember you know, right? that society seems to have this. I think I think they, they're trying to cut down on uh, manufacturing costs just a little. You know what I mean? Of amnesia regarding water resistance. There was an article going over this where it said that one needs to be aware that incorporating easily removable backs will mean these handsets will lose water resistance unless a well thought out design is undertaken. Again, selective amnesia for devices like the Samsung S5, which is IP67, or the Sony XP10, which is IP68. This device is IP68 with a user removable battery. Some others argue uh, that, that straight up proves a point, guys. They just don't want to make it, uh, you know, they want you to buy a new phone, basically. That removable batteries will make smartphones Whoa. bulky and less premium. But the LG G5 proved that it was possible to make a phone thin, premium, and with a removable battery. That's cool, man. Is that, re is that new, guys? Right to Repair Campaign's coordinator, Christina Gnappi, calls the ruling, quote, a big success for Right to Repair. Right to Repair. For those of you unfamiliar, Right to Repair is a movement that calls for consumer goods to be easily repairable. Guys, we should be fighting for these rights, man. We've all seen the trend. When your TV or phone is broken, it's more common for people to just buy a new one instead of repairing it. This is due to the components becoming... Hey, like, if I had the money to actually go buy a new one, I'd be for it, bro, but I'm not... Well, me, I mean, me personally... I'm just not the richest person right now, so if I could just buy like a ten dollar battery or something like that, or even like a you know ten dollar twenty dollar screen and just repair it that way, I'm all for that, guys. More complex and integrated over time, but some companies are straight up anti-consumer. In this context, Apple is the biggest culprit. If you own a later model iPhone and the screen breaks, and you go to replace it with a perfectly good screen from the same model. Apple will disable some features and warn you that it's not genuine. What? The same goes for replacing the battery or camera. And even if they are genuine parts but don't have the same serial number, things don't work as they should. This wasn't the case for older Apple products. It's an effort to make wow, them... are you serious, man? Users sent... Screen replacement, $45. Add a warranty screen replacement, $500. Wow. Add a replacement, $165. Glass 300. Oh my god, the device is only to Apple, so an exorbitant no way, man. Rear assembly $900, guys, can be extracted from consumers. Further to this, Apple does not supply diagnostic software, and they've even raided repair shops for having a large stock of genuine repair parts. Same, right? You're seeing repair YouTubers, man. They must be licensed, uh, approved by Apple. Then, let's say that in your MacBook, you have a broken display flex cable. Apple intentionally connects the display flex cable in such a way that you can't just replace the cable. You have to replace the entire display. And this can cost over $700. Oh, come on now. For wire to it. We're looking at a flex cable. A flex cable that is less than 50 cents. I'm telling people, I'm telling technicians that get paid 30 to $50 an hour, spend an hour trying to fix this flex cable that costs 50 cents because we're not allowed to replace it. So if the pads are missing, we have to start scraping away with a dental pick and hope that we can solder a little jumper wire onto a flex cable to reattach it to a chip that was corroded that we then have to file away at to get to the metal because I can't put a new 50 cent hall sensor on that person's MacBook because if I do, it won't work. Oh I man. I understand the argument. Gosh, bro. Is Apple the only one doing this, guys? For Apple wanting safer repairs, but should this mean that even a qualified external repair technician should be blocked from helping people with their damaged devices? Of course, Apple isn't the only company that does this, but for the context of this story, they're the most relevant. So what's the intention of this law? The new law isn't... Yeah, I, I feel like that guy, that commentator guy... Um, the right to repair guy, the, the YouTuber, I think he had a hand, like, uh, you know, he helped us get this law passed. Consumers, as much as it is to protect the environment. Look at all those birds and stuff, man. Right there, guys. Today, when a phone's battery dwindles after a few years, it's much easier for the common user to just buy a new one instead of repairing it. Over 50 million annual tons of e-waste is generated this it's way. It's all bad, bro. 
The European Parliament is making sure that the environmental impacts of batteries is considered. They're aiming to create a circular economy for batteries. This means I'm that- I'm getting like a deja vu kind of feeling for some reason. I don't know why. In a product- Something about uh, these products being uh, like handled. Life cycle, as little as possible of the battery's raw materials should be wasted. Here are some rules covered by the law pertaining to replaceable batteries. Phone manufacturers will need to collect 63% of portable batteries that would normally go into landfill by the end of 2027. Lithium recovery from 73, waste the Bode number. batteries will need to be at 50% by 2027. And EV batteries will need to be made of certain percentages of recyclable content. Initially, 16% cobalt, 85% lead, 6% lithium, and 6% nickel. All batteries should have a recycling efficiency target of 50% by 2025. This also- Man, we gotta take care of our planet here, guys. You know what I mean? It's, it's not fine. like Futurama. We, you know, uh, we, we gotta find more efficient methods here. Better carbon emissions, everything. But the first point seems difficult. Getting consumers to responsibly give their older phone batteries back to the manufacturer will be tricky to enforce. We'll have to see. So it's unlikely that there's going to be any changes in the next few months to a year. But after this, smartphone makers will have to start gearing up for compliance with the new law. We'll start to see the results of these efforts over the next few years. Is that Keanu Reeves? That looks like Keanu Reeves, man. I say earlier that it's unlikely that manufacturers will design two different phones, an iPhone for Europe and another for the rest of the world. Hey bro, they, they, Europe had an impact on the whole world, it seems, guys. But anything is possible, really. It's also going to be fascinating to see what happens to laptops, e-bikes, and EVs. Regardless, things are going to be shaken up in the next few years. And I'm all for electrical vehicles like Tesla that can drive themselves, guys. If you ever watch any of my videos, that's what we're trying to save up for. New phone, new Tesla, uh, you know, getting, getting a new house as well. Interesting question that I pose to you is do you think that the phasing out of user-replaceable batteries was just the natural progression of design as dictated by consumer demand, or are these the sub. changes motivated by profit, resulting in anti-consumer products? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to see another Cold Fusion episode on battery recycling, I'll link that below. Oh, and the third and final episode of my AI series with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation will be live soon. I'll leave a link for that in the description. AI series. Cheers, guys. We've Have got a AI way. videos. Check out Cold Fusion. Guys, I did not know about this channel whatsoever until it popped up on my recommended, like, right now. <gasps> got, like, a diamond as their, uh... Alright, guys. Hey, hey, oh, sorry. Let's read a few comments. Hey everyone, you might notice a couple of seconds in the video where audio is funny. I'm actually in South Korea, so no record. So the recording situation wasn't ideal. We're re recording those lines. Apologies for inconvenience. Apple must be super happy that their phones will now be more eco friendly as they care about it so much. It goes by removing the charger to promote eco friendliness. Oh yeah, there is rumors of them removing the charger, or actually, it might be confirmed. Apple uh, still now has a chance to sell their battery batteries separately. Oh my gosh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool, you know. Even if they're like fifty bucks or whatever. As a kid, I remember having a removable battery Android and the disappointment I felt when upgrading to having a non-removable battery sucked. I used to swap and change my batteries, charge my batteries, and my phone would never die. Yeah, my dad did that as well. And as a matter of fact, he still has an old style phone that could do that. I think. But yeah, guys, that's our video. Honestly, just a power bank would be the what you can bring, you know what I mean? But yeah, thank you for watching. Check out Cold Fuse in the description and do all my reactions live on Twitch. See you guys next one.